In this video, I'll explain why soft sweeps from standard genetic variation are more likely than you may think. It is based on work by Joachim Hermison and myself. We'll focus on a mutation that is initially less fit than the wild type. It comes with a fitness cost, but later the environment changes and the mutation becomes more fit than the wild type. So let's look at a population of organisms and line them up vertically. Each new column represents a generation of the population. So let's look at the mutation in this population. If the mutation occurs, the mutant may reproduce and mutant offspring may be present in the population for a while. But after some time, it most likely dies out again, since it is less fit than the wild type. It may then take a while before the mutation occurs again in the population. So let's rewind a bit and focus on how many mutants there are in the population. As you can see, the number goes up and down. This dynamic equilibrium is called mutation selection balance. Mutation is needed to create the mutations, and selection purchases them from the population. In this particular case, the average number of mutants is 1. But you can see that the actual number of mutants is usually not 1. It is often 0, and sometimes much higher than 1. If the mutation or variant is there, we call it standing genetic variation. So let's assume that at some point the environment changes and the mutation becomes beneficial. It could help the population adapt to the new environment, if it is present. So what if the environment changes here? Well, the mutation is not there, so adaptation from standing genetic variation is not possible. But if the environment changes here, there are several mutants, so the population can use standing genetic variation to adapt to the new environment. A related question is whether adaptation from standing genetic variation occurs through soft sweeps or hard sweeps. If one copy of the mutant becomes established and fixes in the population, we call it a hard sweep. When multiple copies become established and fixed together, we call it a soft sweep. We ran many simulations to determine how likely it is that adaptation from standing genetic variation occurs through a soft sweep. We used different values of theta where theta is a product of the mutation rate and the population size. This dot shows the probability of a soft sweep given that adaptation from standing genetic variation has happened. The probability is high when theta is high, but it doesn't get very low even if theta is very low. We also predicted the probability that a soft sweep occurred using a mathematical model. If we use the average number of mutants to predict the probability of a soft sweep, we clearly underestimate the probability of a soft sweep. But if we use the full distribution of the number of mutants in the population, taking into account that sometimes there are no mutations and sometimes there are many, we can predict the probability of a soft sweep quite accurately. This dashed line is one of the reasons why some people think that soft sweeps from standing genetic variation are very unlikely. But really, it is a solid line that we should be looking at. For most parameter values, soft sweeps are more likely than hard sweeps. If you'd like to learn more, have a look at our paper. It is now out in Methods in Ecology and Evolution. This paper also discusses several other issues, such as which types of soft sweeps there are and when to expect them, with examples in fruit flies, humans and microbes.